How do you make sure your loved one with an intellectual or developmental disability or autism is financially all right? In this video, I'm gonna give you five strategies for setting your loved one up for financial success. So when you're thinking about this question, you're often thinking about the future, right? So we're gonna be doing a little bit of forward thinking here when thinking about setting your loved one up for financial success. So let's dive in with strategy number one, which is to create your will. Your will is the legally binding instructions on how your assets should be allocated when you pass away. And this allows you to have a say on how your assets should be allocated to the highest benefit of your loved one with a disability. Also, if you do not have a will in place, this is the big risk, is if you, if you don't have a will in place, your loved one will likely be a part of a, a beneficiary of your estate. However, they are at risk of losing any social assistance that they have because of certain asset limits or caps. These asset caps can be as low as $2,000 depending on where you live. So if your loved one's getting some sort of social assistance, whether it's SSI in the United States or um, wherever you live, getting that kind of disability pension or disability funding, your loved one's at risk of losing that if you don't have a will with a proper language and trust, etc., set up. Now, you are not alone if you do not have a will set up. 50% of people do not have a will. So if you are within this 50% of people that do not have a will, I really strongly encourage you to book an appointment and get your will set up today. And I get it, not something necessarily you wanna think about, but it has to be done. And anything can happen at any point in time. So take action, get this done today. Strategy number two is to investigate trusts. So a trust can be set up to the benefit of your loved one so that uh, you know inheritance can flow to your loved one while still maintaining those so, that social security funding, those government benefits. And there's different types of trust depending on where you live. In the United States, um, it's often called a special needs trust. If you're in Canada, it's called a Henson trust. If you live somewhere else, it might be called something else, some sort of discretionary trust. There's also different types of trusts to hold assets like real estate. So you're gonna to wanna to talk to a knowledgeable lawyer, specifically that's knowledgeable on disability law to set up the right trusts for your situation. Strategy number three, to set your loved one up financially for the future is to apply for support funding that your loved one's entitled to. So if you haven't yet, apply for the funding um, or supports that are available through government programs. These programs vary by country, by state, by province. So you need to do a little research. Uh, go to Google and type in government disability supports for you know your location. And you'll start to go down the right path. You might pick up the phone and call some of those people, call some of those numbers that come up and to go deeper and learn more. You can also look up supports for low income families or low income housing if it's available where you live, right? I really encourage you to go in and investigate all of those options. Also, I encourage you to investigate individualized funding options, sometimes referred to as IF. And IF can give you much more control and flexibility uh, in terms of choosing supporters and choosing the delivery of support services. If these tips have been helpful for you so far, I've got more of them for you in my life planning 101 guide. It's gonna give you lots more strategies on building an awesome ordinary life and setting your loved one up for a secure future. So go ahead and scroll down and grab your free copy. And a life plan is so important for your loved one because it's like the operating instructions for the money that you're gonna be leaving potentially for your loved one. So you wanna have a life plan set up. The life planning 101 guide is gonna be more strategies and it's gonna guide you down that path. All right. That brings us to tip number four, which is to learn about savings programs for people with disabilities where you live. Now, two common ones, whether, so if you live in the United States, I invite you to look into ABLE accounts, A-B-E-L accounts. And if you're in Canada, I encourage you to look into RDSP uh, savings account, Registered Disability Savings Plan. Now, these are types of savings accounts that can provide a huge benefit to your loved one. They allow your loved one to save money that can be used to support them in their future and their well being, but they do not impact your loved one's social benefits. So they are definitely worth looking into. 
Tip number five, this is going a little bit off the board compared to the first four tips, but it's super, super important. Tip number five is to consider employment for your loved one. Now, let me ask you this question. Why do you work? Or maybe why did you work? Because maybe you're retired and you're not currently working. But the answer is because it provides financial stability. And another reason is it also gives you a sense of purpose and a sense of contribution to society, a level of fulfillment. So employment is super, super important. And for many people that have a developmental disability or intellectual disability, employment is not considered or it's looked over. But let me tell you this, there's many, many people with disabilities that are employed in paying jobs and earning a good wage for the, what they're doing. So I really encourage you to investigate paid employment because it provides your loved one more financial uh, stability and provides your loved one a way to contribute and have more fulfillment and purpose in their life. Also relationships, like how many relationships do we meet in the workplace? So there you have it, the five key areas to consider when setting your loved one up for success financially. So just a quick review, number one, Make sure you got a will set up. Number two, investigate those trusts. Number three, get your loved one set up with the support funding or the supports that are available and they're entitled to. Number four, learn about savings programs that are available for your loved one, which can have a huge benefit. Number five, consider paid employment because it provides so much more financial security for your loved one. So there you got it, the five key areas to consider setting your loved one up for financial success. If these tips have been helpful for you so far, you're really gonna want my Life Planning 101 guide. So it's gonna give you more strategies to build that awesome ordinary life for your loved one. And again, it's like the operating instructions for the money you might be leaving for your loved one in your estate. You're gonna to wanna to have that set up. So go ahead, grab your free copy down below by clicking on the link and you've got this. I'm Eric Gall. Together, let's keep taking small steps forward.